Good afternoon. Welcome to the Durham Planning Commission. Uh, the members of the Durham Planning Commission have been appointed by the City Council and the County Board of Commissioners as an advisory board to the elected officials. You should know that the elected officials have the final say on any issue before us tonight. If you wish to speak on an agenda item tonight, please go to the table to my left and sign up to speak. For those of you who do wish to speak, please state your name and address clearly when you come to the podium. Please. Speak clearly and into the microphone. Each side, those speaking in favor of an item and those speaking in opposition to an item will have 10 minutes each to present their side, and that time will be divided among all persons wishing to speak. Finally, all motions are stated in the affirmative, so if a motion fails or ties, the recommendation is for denial. Thank you. May we have the roll call, please? Commissioner Alturk? Here. Commissioner Johnson? Present. Commissioner Ghosh? Present. Commissioner Bryan? Present. Commissioner Satterfield? Present. Commissioner Harris? Present. Commissioner Chair Busby? Present. Commissioner Hyman? Uh, Vice Chair Hyman has requested an excuse absence. Commissioner Miller? Here. Commissioner Kinchin? Present. Commissioner Hornbuckle? Present. Commissioner Van? Commissioner Van is also requesting an excuse absence. Commissioner Gibbs? Present. And Commissioner Freeman? Great, thank you. Yes, Mr. Chair, I move that uh, Commissioners Hyman and Van be excused. Second. Properly moved and seconded. All those in favor, please raise your right hand. Any opposed? The motion passes. Uh, we will move to approval of the minutes and the consistency statements from the September 12th, 2017 meeting. Yes, Commissioner Bryan. Do you want the uh, corrections prior to a motion? I would, please. <laughs> any, any corrections would be welcomed. On uh, page two of the minute, uh, case Z17, Zero, 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 0008. I think the motion was to recommend approval of the case with the additional pro offer that was made concerning a setback from the six houses next to the property uh, with, with, with regard to the consistency statement. My take on the matter is is that this statement in the minutes is wrong that the request is not consistent with the plan and the reason i say that is that even though we had approved and recommended approval of the plan amendment council hadn't voted on it yet and until council votes on it it's not been approved and therefore the zoning case is not consistent 
um, staff, Mr. Brown, you're actually correct. We can make that change. I think that was an oversight. We'll take care of it. Thank you. And then on the next case down, the Andrew Avenue Residential, I think we should pr probably note if we continue our usual custom is that Commissioner Freeman voted no. Mm -hmm. And if I may, while we're on the things on the uh, written comments, for Brian, the very first sentence, in, in, or the second sentence in my comment, is that a plan amendment request is pending. The is pending got left out. Thank you. Any other additions or revisions to the minutes or the consistency statement? And I had one other for, for my comments under the Ellis Road townhouses. So this is the very first set of comments. My last sentence, it says six exiting neighborhood residential properties. It should be six existing. But if hearing nothing else, I will consider a motion. Move Mr. Chairman. Approval as corrected. Second. Great. Moved by Commissioner Bryan, seconded by Commissioner Miller. All those in favor, please raise your right hand. Any opposed? Motion carries. Thank you. Adjustments to the agenda. Ms. Smith? Um, good evening. I'm Grace Smith, Planning Department. I do not know of any reason to adjust the agenda. And staff would affirm that all legal notice requirements have been carried out in accordance with local and state law. And those affidavits are in our office to prove such. Um, and we will make the changes to the minutes and the written comments and we'll resend those out to you guys via email if that's all right. That's great. Thank you. Mm -hmm. I move the approval of the agenda as presented. Second. Moved by Commissioner Bryan, seconded by Commissioner Harris. All those in favor, please raise your right hand. Any opposed? Great. The motion passes. We will move on to our sole public hearing of the evening. This is a zoning map change Z1700011. This is the 5275. North Roxboro Street, and we'll start with the staff report. Thank you. <clears throat> Good evening, Jamie Sonyak with the Planning Department. I will be presenting case number Z1700011, 5275 North Roxboro Street. The applicant is Tim Sivers with Horvath Associates. <clears throat> the property is located within the city's jurisdiction. The zoning request is from CN to CG with a development plan. The site is 1.131 acres, and the proposed use is 10,000 square foot building for uses permitted within the CG zoning district. <clears throat> this is the aerial map. The site is located within the suburban development tier. It is highlighted in hatched red and within the Noose River Basin. The site is adjacent to Commercial Center, including a Food Lion grocery store, as well as McDonald's, fast food restaurant, and other commercial uses along Roxboro Street. Sorry if you can't see this map very clearly, but this is the existing conditions map that is within the development plan. Again, the site is 1.131 acres. It is located on the west side of North Roxboro Street, and it is located within the EB Overlay District. The property contains a vacant Burger King building, surface parking lot, and an existing driveway off to North Roxboro Street. This is the future land use map 
and it shows that the property is located within the commercial future land use designation, which is consistent with the rezoning request. <clears throat> These are the context maps that show the existing zoning designation and the proposed. <clears throat> the applicant has submitted an application to change the zoning from CN to CG, which is shown on the right in purple hatched. <clears throat> the request has been reviewed by staff and found to be consistent with the requirements of the Unified Development Ordinance. In terms of the requested district, Again, the applicant has committed on the development plan to uh, no greater than 10,000 square foot building um, for all uses permitted within the, within the commercial general zoning district. They have also committed to a maximum impervious coverage that is allowed in the EV overlay zone of 70% and um, shown the tree coverage area of 10%. This is the proposed conditions or the development plan, which um, again commits to the size of the building, the building and parking envelopes, the tree coverage areas, the project boundary buffers, and the multiple access points. In terms of commitments, there are two transportation related commitments. One is related to a right of way dedication for the widening of North Roxboro um, to accommodate a funded TIP project, and the second deals with a bus pullout and a bus shelter on the west side of North Roxboro adjacent to the site. The other commitments deal with design commitments relative to the style of the building, uh, roof materials, uh, and any architectural features. Staff has determined that the um, Proposal is consistent with the comprehensive plan in terms of being consistent with the commercial FLOM. <clears throat> it is contiguous with other commercial development and compatible with other surrounded uses, surrounding uses, excuse me. <clears throat> there is adequate water, sewer, and roadway infrastructure to support the development. There are proffers relative to roadway improvements that deal with prior to the issuance of certificate of occupancies in accordance with um, DCDOT and the City of Durham, and the proposal is consistent with policy 8.14D. Um, the staff determines that the request is consistent with the comprehensive plan and other policies and ordinances, and I just wanted to point out two typos, um, both on page two. Um, one referred to Roxboro Road and not Roxboro street and the second um, concrete was spelled wrong. So I'll, I'll make those corrections in the staff report. I'll be happy to answer your, any questions that you have at this time. Thank you. Great, thank you, Ms. Sanyak. We will now move to the public hearing and we'll open the public hearing. We have one individual signed up speaking for, and that's the only person signed up so far. If anyone else would like to sign up, please let me know. Uh, Mr. Tim Sivers. Good evening, Tim Sivers, 16 Consultant Place, Durham, North Carolina, uh, Horvath Associates. Uh, first of all, I'd like to congratulate um, Chair Busby on your, uh, your switching seats, if you will. Um, I do want to start off tonight with letting you know that the uh, developer, property owner, is, uh, is here sitting next to me tonight, so if you have any questions for him, he's available, can be available as well. Uh, as Jamie went over a few items, the site is, uh, it is one parcel, it is right over 1.1 acres, located just south of the Ladder Road and 15501 intersection. Uh, it is the vacant Burger King site. Um, it is surrounded by the commercial land uses, uh, and it, the site in, along the right of way is, uh, does have a currently funded NCDOT projects for improvements at the Ladder Road and 15501 intersection. Uh, for a reference, you did hear a case uh, last month, which was right about 300 feet south of this property. Uh, we did mail a letter out to the neighborhood property owners and neighborhood organizations. Um, uh, about two weeks ago, I sent a letter out. Uh, I know the city sends letters out, but I wanted to make sure the neighbors and the neighborhood organizations had my contact information. Um, I did get a few calls back um, and a few emails back. Uh, the majority of the um, questions were, what's it going to be? What, what are your intentions? 
but there was no outright uh, opposing of the development, of the rezoning. Um, and to be honest, most were actually excited to see this Burger King being, uh, being um, redeveloped. Uh, the request in front of you tonight is, the mic went up, I'm sorry. All right, the request in front of you tonight is for um, commercial neighborhood zone to be changed to commercial general zone. There are no changes to the future land use map. The development plan is committing to right away dedication for the NCDOT funded project, 10,000 square foot maximum building area, landscape buffers and tree coverage areas, as 70% maximum pervious area, which is actually a reduction from what it is today, uh, as well as building design commitments. I'm available for any questions if you guys have any. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Mr. Sivers. Would anyone else like to speak? Seeing none, I will close the public hearing and move to commissioners. I'll start to my right if any commissioners would like to speak. Can we have the record reflect that uh, Commissioner Freeman has stepped in? Yes, welcome. All right, Commissioner Al Turk, Commissioner Johnson. Okay. Great, Commissioner Al Turk. Thank you, Chair. Um, I have two questions, one for staff and one for the applicant. The first is about the general notes here. Um, by, it says under general note number three, the applicant agrees to construct said improvements prior to issuance of any certificate, uh, certificate of occupancy. And it includes things like um, pavement, mark, pavement markings, uh, roadway improvements, bike lanes, but we typically, I guess, see those on a development plan. Uh, maybe I'm missing something, but, um, and I guess that's really, so I'm wondering about that, and that's related to another thing that I have for staff, which is how is this plan consistent with the comprehensive bicycle transportation plan that here on, in table one? Um, uh, you know, again, I don't see anything on the development plan that would show that, would indicate that. So that's the question for staff, um, should I ask. And for the applicant, um, I mean, I typically base my decisions on the, you know, the, the zoning um, designation and not necessarily what's gonna be on the, the site, but it, it is, it's when you go out there, right, you see a car wash, an abandoned one right across the street from this one. So I'm, um, I guess I'm curious whether there's, a, you know, if you've looked into other possibilities, right, other, aside from building a car wash right across from one that is no longer um, operating. So thank you. Great. Let, let's start with the staff, Mr. Judge. Yes, Bill Judge, transportation. The, uh, the by referencing roadway improvements general note that you cited on the cover sheet, that is a standard note that we ask all applicants to provide whenever they um, are potentially making roadway improvements. In this case, the Roadway improvements would be the uh, transit improvements for the bus stop, bus shelter in the text commitment number one. Okay. So um, it's a rather sort of comprehensive note covering every potential uh, roadway improvement. So that's why there's references to pavement markings, bicycle lanes, and that such. In, that ca in this particular case, those features probably would not apply. As it relates to the comprehensive uh, bicycle uh, plan, the, uh, this corridor is obviously designated for uh, roadway improvements and for uh, bicycle improvements. The, um, there is a funded um, NCDOT TIP project at the intersection of Roxborough, Lata, and Infinity. Right. And as part of that project, the city's been working with NCDOT to basically provide a, a shared uh, path along the um, west side of the road from uh, the intersection at uh, Roxborough, Latta, Infinity, uh, south to the Eno Park. So um, those improvements would likely be done by by NCDOT as part of the part of that TIP project. Okay, but we don't and we don't know when that project is going to get underway. Or um, well, they're finishing. They had a public meeting last week on the right. project to gain feedback, so they're going through the environmental process, and I don't have the exact date in front of me, but um, they're, they're looking to proceed to design right away and uh, construction in the, near, in the next two to three years. Thank you. Mr. Sivers. 
Tim Sivers. Uh, yes, thank you for your question. Um, the, the site right across the street, um, and let me clarify, uh, the, the, we are rezoning to a CG. Uh, the intended use is for a car wash. Um, the owner here, he runs the uh, Autorific, which is on Hildebrand now, and there's multiple sites throughout Durham. So that is our intended use, to clarify. Um, and thank you for your question. The site across the street actually um, is operational. It, oh. it actually looks vacant. I promise you ours will not look vacant when it is operational. Um, the, uh, the, I believe those bays on that side are actually the older style of the you know, go out, get out and power wash your own vehicle. Um, I think there's maybe one of the drive-throughs. Uh, this style is is the new tunnel drive through, like the, the standard autorific are. So, okay, thank you. Yes, sir. Um, all done. Yep. Great, Commissioner Johnson. Thank you, Chair Chairman. Uh, quick question again for uh, Mrs. Cybers. Did I say that right? Cybers. Yes. Thank you. Um, so um, the the application states that no more than seventy percent of the of the the parcel will be uh, impervious. So could you inform me of, of the current site conditions? Uh, what percentage of the, the area is impervious? It's about 72%. And, and so do you have a target of uh, impervious, uh, uh, the nature of the site for your plan develop, uh, re uh, redesign or re redevelopment? 71.85 to be precise, sir, um, is the existing. So we are reducing it about 2%. Um, the, the, we're working on layouts now um, and having, having calculated the impervious coverage, so I, I don't know what it'll be, but we'll, um, we'll commit to, um, to the reduction. Thanks. And one follow-up question, one sure. uh, additional question. Um, uh, could you share uh, the, the thought process in deciding to go with the car? I'm just curious as to what was the, the genesis or the nature of going with uh, the car, uh, car wash versus uh, other potential uses for the redevelopment of that? The, uh, this, this owner and developer is a car wash developer. It's as simple as that. Thank you. Um, uh, Commissioner Satterfield. Thank you. Uh, just as a matter of interest, probably more than anything, and whether the, the staff uh, can field this or the developer, just as a matter of interest, again, what is the process for managing the wastewater coming from the car wash? Does it just go through the city's um, sewer system? Uh, the owner will be able to answer that a little more clear than I will. And, sir, if you don't mind stating your name and address, please. Sure. My name is Dale Reynolds. I live at 105 Abbotsford Court in Durham. Um, I am the owner of Autorific Car Washes. I'm also a manufacturer of car wash systems also. So we're very much involved in water conservation. I'm past president of the North Carolina Professional Car Wash Association, and we uh, actually got a law passed back in 2009 on water conservation for car washes. So all of our facilities are certified uh, water conserving facilities here in Durham and at our other facilities as well. So great question that you asked there. Uh, so we will not only be recycling some processed water, but we'll be uh, also reclaiming the dirty water, filtering it, reusing it, and all as well. So our uh, water will be tremendously less than say a home car washer. We'll be using about 20% of the water that the average person uses to wash their car at home. Great, thank you. Thank you. Next, we have Commissioner Miller. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, I intend to vote for this um, rezoning. Uh, in my view, it is consistent with our comprehensive plan. It's consistent with the future land use map, which shows this general area is commercial. It is a commercial node at the corner of Latta and Roxborough Roads. Uh, and this property is nestled comfortably within the commercial node. I favor it because it is the redevelopment of property in the node instead of an expansion of the node, which is we, what we normally see. Uh, you have heard me from this seat in early, other cases decry uh, what I call the slash and burn development, leaving uh, parcels uh, defunct and unused that are already zoned appropriately in order to rezone properties that are green fields um, in order to create new uses. To me, this is ideal. I note that the developer has limited uh, the building on the property to 10,000 square feet, which is relatively low intensity for CG. And I'm assuming he is asking for CG because car washes probably aren't allowed in CN. Um, it's not that he wants to build as big as CG allows, it's because he, there is a use that's available in one category that's not available in the other. 
But having said that, um, uh, I note that there is no requirement that the property be used for a car wash, and I rather like the idea that uh, although I hope the car wash is successful, if it is not, the zoning that he's asked for will continue, continue to govern the property in what I believe is an appropriate step down for, in intensity from the shopping center, which is directly in the uh, quadrant there, uh, Atlanta and Roxborough, as we move south so that the, the node appropriately gets less intense at its edges. I note also that the 10,000 square feet that they have uh, limited themselves to is probably not terribly inconsistent with the deposed Burger King building that is there now. Uh, and so it's not, it doesn't represent that big a change, even if it does represent a change in use. I also note that the 10,000 square feet is proportionately not too far off the 20,000 square feet that we recently approved on a piece of property uh, just a little bit further south, which had uh, issues that in my opinion uh, in dealing with environmental sensitivity and its proximity to the park that are not present here. Uh, so I like it for that reason too. I also note that the, tra uh, the traffic impact over the existing designation is relatively small uh, and that this uh, proposal isn't really going to impact a nearby residential neighborhood, certainly not any more than the, the former fast food restaurant did. So for all of those reasons, I'm going to vote in favor. Great. Thank you, Commissioner Miller. And I do want to point out, I know this was no accident, you used the phrase deposed Burger King. And I thank you for that. <laughs> Commissioner Hornbuckle. Yes, sir. I want to go on record. I am in support of this project. I did have one question for you is concerning, it, do you still have the access on the backside that comes in down into the food line shopping center? Uh, what I remember from Burger King, you could get back. There was a uh, little strip of a uh, way of some access to get onto the uh, bottom and back side of that uh, of the shopping center there. Yeah, the uh, on the map on our um, proposed development plan map, see the connection actually to the south. That will that does actually wrap around the back of the food line. Okay. So, so there is interconnection back to the food. Back well, to the back of the food I was line. hoping you know that it was still going to be that way. And my next question is going to be for staff with the uh, transportation. I did not attend the meeting last week on the public hearing for the, but I had numerous people calling and and uh, asking me did I know anything about it, and it looks like it's going to be a cluster right there. What what they want to do, the way they want to shift everything uh, to go uh, north and making a turn lane at Oak Forest Drive and making a turn lane at Omega Road, that looks like that would be harmful to the, you know this man's business here of just trying to it, you know it's tough getting in and out through there and that. That's the concern I have, but I, you know, I, I'm in full support of the project. I, I appreciate that, sir. And yes, we have we have looked at that and taken that into account. Um, currently, uh, the proposed design will allow access um, southbound access to our site. It will not allow northbound access. There is a leftover type intersection, as as the term, um, at the McDonald's. So if someone coming northbound could enter in at the McDonald's, come back around the food line, back and up through um, that access to the south. Okay, well, I was going to say, I, I don't know. It just sounds like, and, and I, you know, I, I've investigated many, many wrecks in my years with the Sheriff's Department, and that just sounds like, it, the, from, what I, from what I've heard and seen uh, the, the design plan, that sounds like a disaster waiting to happen in that area. And I just, you know, I think it would be, it's going to hurt the businesses that are, you know, that, that, are, that are in that section right there. Well, I believe NCDOT is still taking comments on it, so please, I've provided a few comments myself, so please yeah, reach, um, reach out to them, and there is an online version to provide comments as well, so I, I encourage you to provide the comments, and, and um, whoever's reached out to you, have them go to the site and provide comments as well. Thank you. Nothing. Thank you, Commissioner Hornbuckle. Anything staff would like to add? No? We'll move to uh, Commissioner Gibbs. I keep forgetting I don't pull on this thing or you'll break it, and I'm in hot for enough as it is. Uh, this this Roxborough Road, uh, Ladder Road, uh, that whole area uh, being renovated, uh, it is going to impact several businesses, and it's going to cause uh, residents some concerns until they get used to having to come up with some new routing but that being said, that's just another thing. Uh, it's up to 
your business and all the other businesses to work it out. And from the information I received from the, the public, I'll call it the public viewing of, of this renovation, uh, it really doesn't matter. It, it is the way it's going to be. So let's all resign ourselves to the fact that we're going to be, it's going to be a big change in that area. But that said, and I wanted to get that in somewhere, I do have a question, uh, and I don't know if this would, is, is this car wash uh, in any way slated to replace, displace, or anything, either of the other two car washes across the street? No, sir, they are owned by different operators. Yeah, uh, yeah. This this project meets all of the requirements of the land use, the zoning, and all of that. But I am going to state my opinion. To me, it's a disappointing use for a development when there are other things that would benefit North Durham more than another car wash. Uh, I'm sure it's it's going to be fun to go through and have a clean car and all of that, but uh, it is a disappointment to me, and I, I wish you the best of luck. Uh, I don't see any problems with it. I, I will support it because it does meet the rezoning requirements, and that's the end of my comments, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. Thank you, Commissioner Gibbs. Any other commissioners? Commissioner Johnson. A couple, couple follow-up questions, uh, if I can remember. Um, so one being for staff, um, I, didn't, I didn't get my packet, so I, I had to look at this on my computer and I didn't bring it tonight. So for the, the two other car washes that has been said to be in the area, do we know the, uh, can you provide the, um, the zoning, the zoning uh, designation for those? Two parcels. Um, Off the top of my head, I cannot. One across the street is one of C. I can tell you if you look at the context map, it tells you what the zoning is and. Okay, I'm sorry. Okay. My colleagues here are helping me out. Okay. GC. So so across the street is GC, um, directly across the street, and then south of Omega Road is also GC, and the surrounding areas are CN. Gotcha. And so that's helpful. I was just I'm curious just to the to the nature of um, I think you you raised a good point. I mean I'm in support of the projects uh, for the reasons that uh, my my peers on on the panel here has has noted. Uh, to I just want to clarify a point that Commissioner Miller raised, and he said that in 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 um, approving the uh, the zoning designation from a CG to a C a CN to a CG that in the event that this project doesn't work out, that we reduce the potential maximum impact and that it should be the reverse, correct? So what I was referring to, if I may, Mr. You may, Commissioner Miller. Uh, what I was referring to is, is that this development plan does not limit this use to uh, a car wash. It would be this property in the future, if this rezoning goes through, will be available to any of the uses under CG and um, and also would be under the CG uh, dimensional requirements, which are uh, considerably uh, less restrictive than CN, uh, except for the fact that they have limited the size of the building to 10,000 square feet. Uh, if this had just been a request for ordinary CG, I might have had a little problem with it because I like to see Merfle nodes step down as you go away from the center so that there is a transition rather than uh, from commercial to residential. In this instance, the residential property being the West Point on Reno Park. Um, and so I would have been a little worried about expanding the general commercial area uh, at the expense of the commercial neighborhood. But because this development plan does have a limitation of 10,000 square feet, it will survive with this zoning, even if the car wash doesn't survive, uh, I'm untroubled by this uh, request to go from uh, CN to CG because uh, it really what it does is it permits 
a, a widening of the range of uses, but not a, a range, uh, a widening of the potential development intensity on the property. That's why I'm in favor of that. Okay. Anything to add, staff? I don't know that I could say any better or different than Mr. Miller. There's no commitment on the development plan specific to the car wash. So it's really up to the applicant in terms of if this rezoning request gets approved, they have the option to build any of the uses that are permitted within the zone with the limitation on the building size and all of the other restrictions within the CG um, district standards. So I, I really don't think there's anything else to add with respect to that. Great, thank you. Commissioner Johnson, any additional questions? Thank you. So that was very helpful. I was, I was just trying to clarify that I, that I heard you correctly. Uh, so thank you for that, that clarification. And I just I, I just make the reiterate the point that uh, I uh, rambled through uh, initially. And I, I do see Commissioner Gibbs uh, sentiments in regards to the, the use, the proposed use of the site for another car wash in the sense that I'm, I don't know the thought process of the best and highest use assessment that was done in the sense that uh, came down to it being a, a car wash, what will likely happen uh, given the nature, the stated nature of the, the one across the street is that it probably won't be a viable, as viable as it is now. And, and my colleague thought it was the point right now. So uh, it just raises the question though, well, what, what will happen to those sites? And given that it's uh, commercial general as it looks to be on the, the map here is a question of well, what are we going to do with that site, et cetera, et cetera. But uh, for all, nevertheless, I'm I'm in favor of the, the project for the simple fact that it does meet the future land use map and uh, aligns with uh, uh, the zoning requirements and all that good stuff. So, thanks. Thank you. If uh, Commissioner Freeman, just a quick, uh, just a quick question: Is there a process in place? where you would be able to reach out to those other car washes to at least figure out where they stood? I mean, in a similar sense to like a resident meeting, like mm -hmm. is there a way to at least let they, the businesses know what's happening? Well, there is a requirement under the statute that we notify property owners within 600 feet regarding rezoning requests. <laughs> um, a number of them are included within that area. so. It is not our requirement to contact individual businesses, but if um, if they fall within the specific uh, distance requirement, then they would be noticed. Okay. Hmm. Great, thank you, Commissioner. And, and I also want to add, um, thank you, that there is a, a posting on the property. So if you're outside of the notice requirement, you still can drive by and see that there is a zoning application. It's not going to be specific in terms of the use, but. Okay, thank I you. I think they know. <laughs> if there's no other questions or discussion by the commissioners, I will entertain a motion. If I may, Mr. Chairman, I move that we send case 170011 concerning the property at 5275 North Roxborough Road uh, forward to the Durham City Council with a favorable recommendation. I'll second, saying. Thank you. Moved by Commissioner Miller, seconded by Commissioner Hornbuckle. Any discussion? If none, all those in favor, let's please raise your right hand. And please keep them up. Thank you. Any opposed? Motion carries 12 to 0. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Sivers. Appreciate it. Uh, next, we have new business. We have a presentation of the 2045 Metropolitan Transportation Plan Alternatives Analysis. Uh, good evening. My name is Andy Henry. I work for the Durham Chapel Hill Carborough Metropolitan Planning Organization. That's a lot, BCHC, MPO. And what I want to uh, accomplish tonight is make sure you know what the MPO does uh, and, and uh, why the long range plan, the 2045 Metropolitan Transportation Plan is important. And I want to get any feedback that you might have for us on that plan. 
Um, what is the MPO? We're responsible for the long range transportation planning in all of Durham County, uh, about half of Orange County, including all the municipalities, and a northeast corner of Chatham County. And it's a federal mandate. If you're going to spend federal funding, you have to you have to have an MPO that plans and approves the projects um, in, in that area. We have a policy board. It's mostly composed of elected officials. So uh, for Durham County, Ellen Reckow is a member. Wendy Jacobs is the alternate. Here at the city, uh, Don Moffitt um, and uh, Steve Shule are members. And then uh, Mayor Bell is an alternate uh, on our board. Uh, there's the map. That's our planning area. You can see all Durham County. Part of Orange and northeast corner of Chatham. What this is is we have to include in the MPO all of the urbanized area uh, after each census. So um, that that's how we come up with uh, that border more or less. And so the MPO, in, in cooperation with NCDOT, uh, designates uh, most of the funding, the transportation funding, uh, in the area. And also the MPO has some discretionary funding that we mostly use for bicycle, pedestrian, and, and transit projects. Um, I just want to. Talk a little bit, okay, so I was back, I was here back in January, February, and we, I gave a presentation of comprehensive transportation plan, and that's that big circle there, and those are projects we have in, in the long range plan, uh, and, and it, it just goes by need. If you have a need, you put them in the plan. The next, next circle is what I'm talking about tonight, the Metropolitan Transportation Plan, and you can see that circle's a little smaller, and that's because it has to be fiscally constrained. We have to show that our future revenues we're going to cover our costs. Our costs and revenues have to match, so it's, it's a little smaller. That hatched area there, you might have heard there's a prioritization process that NCDOT has. Uh, some people refer to it as SPOT. The legislation is called STI, Strategic Transportation Investment, and uh, that's the process you get into the final ball you see there, which is the 10-year uh, transportation improvement program, and that's where projects are funded. And right now, uh, the MPO is getting ready to approve 2018 to 2017 transportation improvement program. Important thing to know is that for the highway projects, you can't get into the TIP unless you're in the MTP, the long range plan we're working on currently. Uh, why is it important? Uh, well, it lists uh, all the highway transportation other projects that we feel we need to uh, address our deficiencies to the year 2045. Um, it uses future land use, so we make some assumptions about where population and employment are going to be located out to the year 2045. That goes into the travel demand model, shows us where our, we think our deficiencies are going to be. Um, fiscal constraint, I mentioned that a minute ago. It has to be fiscally constrained. Um, and I mentioned that uh, in order to get funding, it has to, in the, through, in the TIP, to get into TIP, it has to be in this long-range plan. Um, not so much. We used to use it planning before. That might change since we now have a CTP that First time the MPOs had a CTP, the comprehensive plan, that, that bigger ball you saw there. Um, we now have a, C, a CTP, and that can be used for uh, like dedicated and reserving right away uh, in the development review process. But up, up till when we had the CTP, the, uh, this MP, MTP was used for that purpose. Um, it's been a long process. We're probably on our second year. We did our goals and objectives, we did a, a land use uh, forecast, socioeconomic data did a deficiency analysis where we went out and took the 2045 population and employment and ran it in our model using today's transportation network to see where our deficiencies are going to be. Um, we're now on the alternatives analysis, and I'll, I'll explain that a little bit more in a minute. And uh, in the next several weeks, we'll release what's called the preferred option. That just means a draft plan. We'll have another two-month uh, period where the public and, and, and people can get feedback to us. And then probably January uh, 2018, we'll adopt the MTP. Uh, the alternatives, basically, uh, what we do is we take, uh, we have two different land use alternatives. We have one we call the uh, community plan, and that's based on the, the, uh, the local comprehensive land use plans and any policies they have. And then we have another one called AIM High. That, that's based on the comprehensive plan. But what we did is there's now a study going on uh, about the markets, different markets around the transit stations, and we used uh, information from the draft of that study to increase some of the densities and some of the mixed uses around the uh, uh, transit station areas to, to create another, um, another land use scenario. We take those land use scenarios, we, we, uh, 
we, we put them together with different transportation networks. One will have a lot of highway, not so much transit. Another one will have a lot of transit, not so much highway. Um, another one uh, is kind of a mix of both. So we, we match those and then we run them and we look to see where the congestion is going to be, what the performance measures, et cetera, look like. Um, I should mention we, when we come out with our draft plan, the preferred option, we're not just going to take one of these alternatives and, and propose it as our draft. We're going to select projects from all the different alternatives. Uh, these are some of the, the guide totals for population employment. You see population there. If you look at Durham, uh, 2013, 286,000. Um, we show it going to 475,000 by the year 2045, a uh, 66% increase in, in population. Employment uh, is 192,000, and then we, we have it going to 342,000. It's a 78% increase. So Durham's going to grow uh, fairly quickly, according to our, our projections, and also employment will continue to outpace the population here. That means we're... we're um, we're attracting a lot of uh, employees from the collar counties outside of outside of the Triangle and Durham. Uh, what information is available? There's a lot of performance measures uh, that are available on these different alternatives. To tell you the the uh, average trip time, vehicle miles traveled per person. A lot, lot of lot of uh, data like that. Travel ice crones. You see that uh, map there? It looks uh, looks like a contour map or weather map. Um, that that shows the travel time from the different centers. In, in 10 minute increments. So if you're in downtown Durham, how far can you get in the afternoon peak in 10 minutes, 20 minutes, 30 minutes? So you can you can see a lot of that data. It gives you an idea of what your what your market is. Uh, travel time, we show travel time between uh, the major centers and, and how that changes from uh, today and, and what it would be in, in the future if you use one of the alternatives. And uh, I'll show you the congestion maps. You, you've probably seen these before. Basically what this does is it uh, looks at the volume. Uh, uh, th this is the congestion map for the no-build scenario that I talked about. And we take that 2045 population employment and put it with the current network. And whenever you see orange, that means that the, the volume, traffic volume on that uh, roadway segment is over the capacity of the roadway segment. And you see red, that means it's at 120% of the capacity. And uh, the level of service uh, that we use for capacity here is level of service C. So it, it, in transportation talk, it goes A, B, C, D, E, F. A is, is free flow. F is you know, barely moving. And those are the level of service. We use a level of service E uh, on this model, which is you know, pretty high, pretty congested. So you can see if, uh, if we don't start improving some of those roadways, uh, you're going to see a lot of congestion in the, in the major corridors. Uh, some of the key conclusions we got from the uh, alternatives analysis, uh, demographics, uh, as I said, the triangle will grow fast, population employment. Um, the, the, the employment uh, will outpace the population increase. Uh, congestion, so uh, when you look at today's congestion, um, let's say it's here, and then you do that no-build scenario, you just, you just get a ton of congestion uh, in, in your performance measures. But when you use your alternatives where you're improving some of the roadways, that congestion goes down, but it never returns back to those 2013 levels. Uh, I know that doesn't surprise anyone, but um, even when we're, uh, you know, throwing a lot of uh, roadway improvements in there, et cetera, um, according to our model, we never get back to, to where we were before. Um, we found that uh, the light rail and the other transportation investments, uh, they, they increased the bicycling and pedestrian modes in those corridors. And, uh, we also found that we, when we use the higher density, that aim high land use uh, scenario that we had, um, it, um, it increased uh, also bicycling and pedestrian use um, uh, in the whole area, and it improved the travel time. And that's because it's just more density around uh, transit stations, more mixed use. Um, some of the projects being considered, uh, you, uh, this is a map. Um, of the kind of central Durham area. Um, you know, widening or, or managed lanes for I-40, uh, NC 147, we widen um, the uh, NC 147, the Durham Freeway, south of uh, where the Eastern Connector uh, intersects with the, with the Durham Freeway. Um, perhaps some type of modernization between uh, Briggs Avenue and, and uh, West Chapel Hill Street uh, that, that makes some safety improvements there. 
not add any additional lanes. US 15501, a uh, freeway conversion uh, between the old uh, uh, South Square area and, and you know where the bypass comes in there, and uh, I-40, uh, a freeway conversion of uh, US 70, uh, NC 54, uh, some widening and interchanges, and then um, Duke Street uh, going north, uh, some type of median divided boulevard uh, from I-85 up to up to the break with uh, North Roxborough North Roxborough Road. So those are some of the some of the projects being considered uh, on the highway side. Uh, on the transit side, we're basically using the Durham County Transit Plan um, that was just adopted uh, earlier this year. What that means is light rail transit, uh, Durham Orange light rail transit uh, system from the hospitals in, in Chapel Hill uh, through Duke, uh, through downtown and out to North Carolina Central uh, University. Also commuter rail transit uh, from West Durham uh, through downtown uh, over to Raleigh, Wake County, and on the Selma. Um, some expanded fixed route and express route services, and uh, funding also for transit vehicles, facilities, uh, bus stops, uh, park and ride lots, et cetera. So, um, that's uh, all the information I have tonight. Uh, I'll take any questions or any comments that you might have. Great, thank you, Mr. Henry. I'll start to my left with questions from commissioners. Commissioner Freeman, Hornbuckle, Commissioner Bryan, Commissioner Freeman. Um, question about the socioeconomic data population and employment. Do you have any data that splits up the people of color or white women that might be included in that population data? No, we just use income. So the model does uh, use income because income, well, actually, ownership of a vehicle is the biggest determinant of whether or not someone's going to take transit or some other mode. Um, and uh, as, a, as a proxy, we don't know uh, vehicle ownership very well, but we have a better idea of the average income in the area. So that's what we use. Is it possible based on registration to see, I mean, that type of information? Uh, no, we haven't used that. Mm -mm. And then also in the demographics, I noticed you mentioned that was bike and pedestrian specifically addressed? Yes, there, there's, uh, it's, it's, it's part of the plan. We don't list the project specifically. We, we reference the local plans. They've done so much planning locally. Um, we don't really have anything to add to that. However, in this plan, like I said, it has to be fiscally constrained. So uh, in this plan, we have $90 million every decade uh, for bicycle pedestrian projects. So it's budgeted in there. Um, we don't list out those projects specifically. 90 million a decade, so 10 million each year. Yes. Okay. Okay. Great, thank you, Commissioner Freeman. Uh, Commissioner Gibbs. Well, I have just bunches and bunches of questions, but I will not start that. <laughs> uh, but I do, I am curious about specifically uh, 15501 and Northern Durham. Uh, is it planned uh, to include that uh, in some manner to connect it to the major uh, transit routes, uh, whether it be light rail, uh, buses, uh, some kind of connectivity for mass transit in the MTP, uh, the, the plan just, it stops up there. And I, I know you mentioned something about Northern Durham, but I, and I ask this at every meeting uh, because it's something, it's, uh, well, everybody knows traffic is everywhere, but Northern Durham County has some I do not know where the traffic is coming from. It just gets more and more and more. Anyway, I, my, my question is, it, it, are there plans to actually include some, uh, some concrete plans to include the Northern Durham area? Yeah, I, I don't know if there is specifically because um, what we're adopting in this plan basically is the Durham County Transit Plan. 
And in that yeah. plan, you know, they mentioned areas that they're going to serve. Also, they have the, the additional uh, uh, transit service hours in that plan. So um, they don't reach out 20, 30 years and say exactly where a, a bus fixed route transit route is going to right. go. They're just talking more about the level of service that they're going to do, too. So I don't think it, that we have anything sp uh, specific. Um, we do have to model something. And we usually, um, you know, when I say model, we, we have in 2045, we need to model what, what the, the, tra the transportation system is gonna, going to look like. And we almost always have a feeder service into the, um, into the light rail stations and to a certain extent in the commuter rail stations from all over um, the town. So I'd imagine we do have something in there, but I, don't, I can't uh, say for sure. Uh, the other thing is I, I know, I'm pretty sure we have some park and ride uh, facilities mm -hmm. as well in the long range plan. Um, up on Roxborough Road. Yeah, and th the reason I, I mentioned this, at, in every meeting, whether it's specific to an overall plan or, or whatever, I just want to keep that uh, that idea out in everybody's mind, uh, whatever this study is about. But thank you for your, uh, your answers. I appreciate it. Great. Thank you, Commissioner Gibbs. Commissioner Hornbuckle? Yes, sir. Uh, I'm also northern Durham County, the Rougemont area, and we do have quite a bit of, you know, traffic. My question is, I know where a lot of the traffic comes from. It comes from Person County, and I feel as though Person County should have been involved in, in, in on this. And, and to me, now, you know, I'm sure there's going to be people to disagree with me. I think Person County should have been involved in this more than Chatham County. And I, I don't understand, you know, because there is a lot that comes, it, it affects the northern, the entire northern part of Durham County is traffic coming from Person County. And I think Person County should have uh, uh, been in on, on this. All right. So, you know, the MPO only includes Durham County. Uh, however, the Triangle Regional Model, the area that we model, does go into Person County. Um, it, uh, it looks like if you if you saw a person kind of yes sir well yeah. I, I like I said I understand that but you looking at, I, I look at this and I see where it shows you know Chatham County and I said well I can see where we'd have more effect in, in effect in all of Durham people working downtown or all over Durham that are coming from uh, person County more than Chatham County so that's why I, I, you know, I really feel as though that uh, person County should have some representation in on that mm -hmm. okay. yeah, that's a good point any other no questions. Thank you, Commissioner Hornbuckle. Commissioner Miller? I just wanted to comment very, uh, if I understand this correctly, we are uh, pretty far along in creating a transportation plan that's going to reach out a little bit more than 25 years, and we're basing it uh, at least in some measure on future land use projections and a comprehensive plan we're about to change, and that worries me a little bit. Mm -hmm. That's all I wanted to say. I agree. Commissioner Bryan. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, this is just a brief comment, but I spent some time today looking at information on the website that's referred to in the cover memo. And one thing in particular, I looked at several maps. Unfortunately, I could not find a key anywhere that told me what the color of the lines meant, so the maps didn't have that much meaning to me. And my suggestion is please make it easier to find the key if you want people to look at your maps and derive something from it. Yeah, you're, you're right about that. We have some interactive maps online. You can open them up and zoom in and zoom out just like you can on a Google map, and it'll show you the different projects, uh, the fixed guideway, and it'll show you the highways. Um, I know where to find. The, it's up on the right corner, a little icon, but it's just not obvious. So it, it, it's a good comment. Thank you. Commissioner Alturk. Thank you, Chair. I had two questions, and, and my first was exactly Commissioner Miller's question about the fact that we're, you know, part of what you're basing this on is the current comprehensive plan. So I was wondering if, um, I, I don't know, I guess it was the same concern that Commissioner Miller had. Miller had. And then my second question was about, I mean, you, you say that the plan is fiscally constrained. Um, can you say more about that? I mean, is that based on future projections of revenue, or is it just what is slotted now for transportation? Or you know, because this is a you know, 27-year plan, so I'm just curious about the process. Then. Yeah, 
So um, to, to talk about the comprehensive plans, I mean, you know, that, that's what the federal requirements are. You know, you have to, you have to use currently adopted plans and policies. So, you know, we, we, we stick with that. Um, your, your other question, what was it? Oh, I'm sorry. I'm talking about, about, so it's, you know, the plan is fiscally, or the, oh, yes. Yeah. Right, it's, and yeah. what is that based on? What yeah. are the models? Or So uh, we, uh, North Carolina DOT has a, a revenue plan, a long-range plan that they have, and we use their long-range plan. And we just make assumptions about, um, you know, look at, looking at their, they model their future revenue, and looking at their future revenue, we make some assumptions about how much of that would, would come to this area. Um, for the for right now, because they have the STI, the Strategic uh, Transportation Investment, um, you know, next couple decades, we're going to assume that STI, um, we're going to use the STI requirements. And those are pretty uh, specific about how much comes to the division level, how much comes to the regional level, and how much is available at the state level. So um, we, we, we use their, their plan and their model. Great, thank you. Any other questions or comments from the commissioners? No. Seeing thank none, you. Mr. Henry, thank you. Uh, any closing comments you'd like to make? No, thank you for your time and, and um, thank you for your comments. Yeah, we appreciate your work. Thanks for coming. Yeah. Before we adjourn, just want to check in with staff. Any updates for us? And we appreciate a sneak peek at next month's agenda. Grace Smith, you have your sneak peek in front of you. If you have yes. any questions, feel free to email us um, and we'll get back with you regarding your questions. And I did want to introduce someone, a uh, new staff member, well, fairly new, new to you because you haven't met her yet. Uh, Terry, would you come up? Um, Terry Elliott is um, Ms. Cole's replacement. While she's not at the meetings um, every month with you, um, she is doing all the work in the background. So if you need anything, you can reach out to Ms. Elliott and she'll be glad to help you or myself or anyone else here. Oh, and Evan, can, Evan doesn't actually work for me, but yeah, Evan's new too. Evan Tenenbaum is actually um, in Scott Whiteman's work group, and he, so he is a, a new planner on staff, and he will be seeing him at these meetings as well. Great. Every meeting is this smooth and quick, so welcome aboard. <laughs> <laughs> Commissioner Miller had a question. I do, Grace. Can you update us? Maybe 30 seconds. You're starting a new Citizens Planning Academy. Can you... So can somebody tell us about that and how it's going? Wait, you sure. Have to, so, to graduate it like I know. something first. So um, actually that is actually, the, that particular uh, initiative is being staffed by Mr. Whiteman's work group as well. And Ms. Young probably can give you a quick blip on it. Um, but it's, it's getting ready to kick off, I believe, if I'm not mistaken. Can you tell us how many people and what the sessions and, and how you may have changed it from based upon the experience on the first administration? Well... If Scott Whiteman were here or Matt Filter were here, they could tell you how they've changed it. I don't know the details, but I do know that they have redone um, some portions of the curriculum to make it more interactive and less lecture-based for the first um, three or four, three sessions. The fourth session will still be a culminate in a mock planning commission um, with a certificate graduation ceremony. So that, that piece remains unchanged. All the stuff that precedes it is going to be a little more interactive than previously. Although the content, the material that's covered will be roughly the same. Um, and I think it begins, don't quote me, but next week, perhaps, next is, the first, yeah, is the first session. And plus um, four thirds is following the next. Correct. Um, so we, I think we do have a couple of folks um, from boards and commissions that got in. I don't remember everybody, but we had, I want to say, 100 or so applicants. And we were able to take 22. I've had a number of people come to me and express their disappointment. Uh, I think this is a great thing, and I hope that we make it better and better through experience and we can reach more and more people. Well, what we're gonna, our goal is to try and implement it and have it happen once a quarter, which will be more than twice as often as it's been happening. It's anytime you start something new, you kind of have to get it under your belt and refine it a little bit. And so I think once we get through this next session and under the revised format, work out any kinks, we'll be ready to kind of roll with a quarterly planning academy. Thank you. That's great. If there's nothing else, the meeting is adjourned. Thank you all. Have a good Thank night. Very much. Oh, great first meeting.